right after that angelic handover, new rulership will be established on planet Earth, Revelation 20 and verse 4. Now this will not be a long class, I promise you we're at the end, but it's just enough for us to close, so tie up the loose ends. Amen. Revelation 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they said, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahshua, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The mark of the beast is a mark of authority. It's a mark. It's a signature. Yes, sir. And there's a group of people on the earth that have been bearing the mark of the beast for a long time. Amen. There's another group of people that's been bearing, bearing the mark of Yahweh. Yes. yes, sir. And these people that sit on this throne have never taken the mark of the beast since they have come to conversion. Right. Amen. They have never taken that mark. They're walking in obedience. They will sit on thrones. Right. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do, do, do you ever just ride down the road and let that permeate in your brain what that means? I will be sitting on a throne with Yahshua, the Messiah. It's almost, you have to have the Holy Spirit for it to even get in your mind right. All I think about it is the vision that will keep you from perishing into Christianity. Amen. You've got to keep, before you leave today, remember what today's lesson is. We are presenting you the whole vision so that you can turn it into a television. Go tell the vision. Amen. Tell it to everyone that the kingdom of God is coming to earth and that a new order, a regenesis is going to happen where literally, literally, everything on planet Earth is going to change and be regenesis again. Re-Eden. Yahshua said, whoever follows me in this regenesis will sit on these 12, or the, now remember, this is not a literal 12 thrones. This is the number 12. Symbolically, this is the divine government. There will be at least 144,000 thrones in heaven. Now, what happens after we take over? After we've been commissioned, judged, assigned to wherever we're going to rule and reign with Christ? The very next thing that has to happen is Yahshua has to turn and reestablish the house of Judah. Yes. Okay? Now, Yahweh is not dealing with the house of Judah at this time. Only the house of Ephraim, which are the ten lost tribes of Israel. It is not time for the Jewish people to be saved. Now, there is a remnant of them that will come into remnant, uh, 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 remnant Israel. And the, but, but the nation, the tribe, the general of them is not coming in, and the Holy Spirit is not drawing them. That's right. It's not their time. Not their time. Now, whenever you realize that, then you can understand how special this moment in time really is for all of you. Amen. Every one of you have been called and you're going to bring, you were called last. Who was called first? Anybody know? The Jewish people. The Jewish people. They were called first. You were called last. But very soon, the last will become first, and first will become last. What does that mean? You're going to come in first, they're coming in last, okay? Now, this is Ezekiel's vision, where these two trees will be joined together into one new creation, which is remnant. 
Israel. This is going to happen right after the coming of the Lord. Let's read about it. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 17. Jeremiah 3 verse 17. Amen. And by the way, no one will be in the first resurrection that is not an Israelite. Amen. Just so you know that. Amen. Go ahead. Noah. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the thorns of Yahweh, and all the nations shall be gathered together unto it, to the name of Yahweh, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. This is going to be the great regathering that happens after uh, the millennial reign begins. Go to the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 9 through verse 11. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. All right. Now I want to know how Yahweh is going to be king over all the earth. If his plan is to bring us to heaven. Come on. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. Makes no sense. Why is Yahweh? Now let me clear up some confusion. Pastor, I thought Yahshua was going to be king of the earth. Let me explain it like this. Yash Yahweh is all in all. Yahshua reigns in his stead as the proxy king. But still, at the end of the day, Yahweh is king. He owns everything. Amen. Okay? Yahshua has a different title. He is not king of the earth. He is king of the kings. Amen. We are the kings. Okay? Yahweh is not king of kings. He's king of the earth. Yahshua is placed in proxy to be the head of the brethren. Every one in this room is a king. Every one in this room will be governed by Yahshua and serve with him and will answer directly to him. Read. Amen. Zechariah 14, 9 through 11. And in that day shall there be one Lord. What does that mean, in that day? On the seventh day. On the seventh day. Do you know why people don't know what that means when they read the Bible? They quit keeping the Sabbath day. Right. That is the Sabbath day. In that day, read what's going to happen in that 1,000 year period on your screen. This day right here is the only day, watch this. That Yahshua is Lord of. Amen. Your Yahshua is not Lord of the sixth day. No. Satan is. Yeah. There's only one day that was ever promised to Yahshua. That great day. Amen. Do you know why we keep the Sabbath day holy instead of Sunday? This is that great day. It's the seventh day of the week. Right. Tomorrow is the first day. Yeah. Right. It was the Pope of Rome that changed <laughs> Yahweh's Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day. Uh -huh. Do you know why he did it on the bed? He hated the Jewish people. Yeah. Anti Semitism began in the Catholic Church. Yeah. You ain't got to trust me. Google it. Right. They hated him. Why? Their hearts, they thought they were right. They thought the Jews killed Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's right. So they thought they were doing God of service. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 But they didn't understand. God blinded the eyes of the Jews. Yeah. They had to do what they did. Yeah. It was destined. Yes. But the Catholic Church said we want nothing to do with the Jewish people. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to quit keeping the seventh day holy. And the Pope of Rome said, by my authority, dude, you ain't got no authority. The word is our final authority. He said, on my authority, we are now going to venerate the day of the sun, which is Sunday for the day of worship. And then, was it long? They wouldn't let him keep Passover. Replaced it with Easter. 
wouldn't let them keep any of the holy days, replaced it with Christmas, yep. Mardi Gras, New Year's. And yet, in the last days, Yahweh says, I'm going to find the people that are true Israelites. Well, let, me, let me ask you a question. How many of you, if, <laughs> do we have any Hispanics here? No? Okay. Where's Cali when I need her? <laughs> if you right, if you met a Hispanic that did not like salsa, Oh, no. No me gusta. <laughs> <laughs> or burritos. No. Or enchiladas. <laughs> Do you think you've really met a Hispanic person? No. When you find an Israelite that don't really keep the beast, you've not met an Israelite. Oh, It's as natural to us as sheep wool. Yes, amen. Do you have to tell a sheep to grow wool? No, you don't have to tell an Israelite to keep the Sabbath holy, to keep the feast days. Why? It's so natural to our spiritual DNA that we can think of doing nothing else. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're in that moment where Yahweh is regathering the house of Israel. Why? Because the next regathering right here will not just be that, well, it'll be the whole house of Israel, but it will be the house of Ephraim and the Jewish people. At that moment, Yahshua is going to turn back to the Jews. Now, I want to clear something up. Some people confuse when I say that. Some people confuse, like we know that the United States of America is modern day Israel. Some people confuse that with replacement theology. They think that we're, we're saying we have replaced Israel. No, no, that's Christianity that does that. No, no, we know that. We know who Israel truly is. Okay, we're just re-identifying her, but we're not replacing her. We know that. So just don't ever get confused by that read. Amen. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> In that day, there's going to be one name. Yes, Yahweh. Yah, for the sake of argument, yeah. one name. Yes. Listen to me. Everyone on planet Earth that looks at you weird now when you say Yahweh yeah. will all say it. Yeah. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. In that day, everyone will know my name. Wait a minute, I thought everybody knew his name right now. His name's God, didn't it? No, no, no. Now, watch what he's doing at the same time. I need you to watch this carefully. What he's going to do then in the whole world, he is already introducing the name to the forerunners of the millennial reign. That's us. Do you get that? Yes. Amen. In that day, I'm going to reveal my name. But in this day, I've already done it. Amen. I promise you, you go walk in a Christian church and say Yahweh or Yahshua, and they will look at you like you have just fallen off the mothership. Now, it's becoming a little bit more acceptable now, but it wasn't when we started. We're the forerunners of that great day. You're the forerunners. You've got to take the ridicule of ignorance. Okay? I don't mean ignorance in a bad way. But you've got to take the ridicule of ignorance. You know, uh, what is the old saying? Today's heretic is always tomorrow's prophet. Amen. Any great, the church would call a heretic. 50 years later, all quote me. Why? He was ahead of his time. Every one of you in this room are ahead of your time. You're, uh, you're what did Paul say, born out of season. Every one of you are out of season. Meaning, one day, this will be your season. Right now, you're born out of season. That's why the world. Saints, listen to me. I know your families don't get it. I know that. I, and you know why? They have not listened to this teaching day in 
and day out like you do. They haven't put the pieces together like you have. So you've got to understand you're out of season and be okay with it. Yahweh chose you to be out of season. And that day, I'm going to teach them my name. Read. Amen. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. And that day shall there be one Lord in his name one. Verse 10. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Gabah to Ramon, south of Jerusalem. All the land is going to be changed. Amen. Everything will be organic. All of the land will be healed. And the money will rain. It'll be a regenesis. It'll be a regenesis. Read. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place. From Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate. Unto the corner gate and from the tower of Peniel unto the king's wine presses. Is that verse 11? Yes, All right, now let's go and let's talk about... Oh, I'm sorry, I was... Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction. Men are going to dwell in a new land. There will be no more war. Because after the world war, we're going to regenesis the land. Read. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. All right, go with me to Isaiah 65. 20 through 23, and let's find out what our life is going to be like after he reunites Jerusalem and Israel, the house of Judah and the house of Ephraim. Amen. There shall be no more thence of an infant of days. Say it again. There shall be no more thence an infant of days. Read. Nor an old man that has not filled his days. Read. For the child shall die a hundred years old. But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. That is the hundred year judgment that takes place. Read. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. What are they going to do? Hold on now. When we get in this, when we listen, when you come up out of the grave, it doesn't say you're going to heaven. Here's what it says you're going to be doing building houses. Amen. Amen. Everyone. Yahweh is going to take his earth and every man is going to have his plot of land, regenerous land, that's going to be given to him, and you are going to have a home. A debt-free, paid-for home. Every man will have the American dream, a home. A safe place to dwell. Three. And they shall plant vineyards. And you are going to have gardens. Amen. Every man's going to have a garden. Read. Yeah. And eat the fruit of them. And your food is all going to be from the garden. Yeah. Organic. Regenist. Amen. Hallelujah. Read. They shall not build another habit. And you will never have to worry about socialism. Amen. Yeah. Never. Amen. You'll never have to worry about someone else taking what you worked for, you will be able to whatever, God is a capitalist. Yahweh is a capitalist. Amen. Yahweh hates socialism. Socialism rewards laziness. Capitalism rewards work. Yahweh doesn't reward laziness. He takes away from the lazy. He rewards the worker. Amen. Read. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. My elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Free elder. It's a lot like when we work out at Remnant Ranch. There's a feeling out there when we work out there. It's not, work. It's not regular work. Amen. There's a joy yes, yeah. in what we're doing. And uh, that's what the millennials are going to be like. There, it's a joy of what you're doing. Read. I do believe that the temperatures will all be about 70 degrees all the time. Yes. Read. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of Yahweh, and their offspring with them. 
They are the seed of the blessed. Oh, I love that. And their offspring with them. Hallelujah. So in the millennial reign, let me clear up a misconception. There will be children being made and born. There will not be a lack of sex in the millennial reign. All right? A lot of people are really confused about that. They take that one scripture about there'll be no marriage and given in marriage, and they misunderstand what Yahshua was saying. The only reason we have to have marriage now is because men are like animals. <laughs> Love is not enough. They have to sign a covenant that they won't cheat. So they got to get married so they'll be faithful to a wife. That's the only reason we have marriage now. Okay? In the millennial reign, your word will be your bond. There'll be no marriage and given in marriage like we you'll be like the angels in heaven, perfect love. Amen. There'll be no cheating and no looking across the aisle. And there, there will be a perfect harmony there, so there'll be no marrying and giving in marriage. But we read all through there. See, darling, let me explain to you, honey. Sex is so good, God's gonna keep it in the millennial reign. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yes. Everything he created is good. We, you know, we act like that's a bad thing. God wants you to have sex within the confines of holiness. Are y'all okay out there? Yeah. yeah. I can't talk about that. Listen to me carefully. God is going to create children all during the millennial reign. Yes. Families is going to all look like the Laquires. <laughs> They're going to be kids. Isn't that the most beautiful sight to see kids running and playing? You think God's going to cut all that off? Oh, no, baby. We're going to have more babies than we ever had. There wouldn't be nobody left in a thousand years without children. Huh? There wouldn't be anyone left in a thousand years if they weren't having children. Because there will also be what in the millennial reign? Death. Yeah. Death. That's right. Because death has not yet been defeated. Right. Yeah. Remember, all things have to be put under Yahshua's feet, and the last thing will be death. Yeah. Right. So during the millennial, you've got to understand why Satan is after marriages today. He wants to pervert in your mind what marriage is. Is. That's why I said earlier, marriage is not for your happiness. Marriage was for you to reproduce and replenish the earth. That's right. Amen. But because men can't keep themselves faithful, we've got to go get a document and have you sign it. Yes, sir. That we can go take you to court and get half your house if you cheat on it. That's not going to be the case right. in the millennial right. Hey, you mind. Okay, I'm yours. All right. Got it. All right. <laughs> It is what it is. Let's go make babies. There we go marrying and giving in marriage in the millennial reign. Now, after the millennial reign, we don't know. The Bible doesn't mention it. But I do know that if Yahweh is a family, if Elohim is family, I'm going to tell you the Mormons are not too far off. I'm telling you they're not on that subject. They truly believe that every family will get their own planet yeah. and keep recreating their family. So my point is, why is that so weird when Yahweh is a family? He's all about family. Why do you think Satan, do, do you know what every girl's dream is now? To go to college and be independent. Yeah. yeah. That's sad. Nobody wants family anymore. Wow. Yeah. No family. We got some women deceiving people and robbing them of families. Families, listen, it's all about family. Why do you think your family is so messed up? Because go look back over your life. You were selfish. Amen. You got married for all the wrong reasons. You get married, and you, the goal is to have so many kids you can't leave one another. It'd be nightmare to try to put all them youngins. I mean, if you got ten youngins, how do you believe? 
She's like, dude, sit down and shut up. We're going to get along. We got all these kids. <laughs> but it's easy when you just create one and you can get a, but the goal was to have a whole litter. Amen. And Satan come along. Satan come along. Sent the women to work and you're more work too. Oh, y'all don't like this? That's okay. I'm trying to tell you where it all started. God never designed a woman to have to support herself ever. And do you want to hear the biggest lie being told to women, turning women into lesbians, saying, I don't need a man? Wow. They need, the Bible said the woman was created for the man. Yes, you do. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, that didn't go over too good, so I'll try it again. I'll write any Jezebel. I don't care. I know the voice of truth that you're listening to. It. Your job as a woman is to serve. When a woman says she don't want a man, she is a lesbian. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Lesbian is, is not sexual, no. it's mental. That's right. Absolutely. And the very ones that scream we don't need a man, that woman's the one that turns into a man to the top. I mean, come on, why don't you need a man? You don't need a man. In the millennial reign, you're going to be making babies. Yeah. Why? Because Yahweh reproduces himself. Yes. And yes. Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. it's not good for you to be alone. No. Yes. I want you to come together and do one thing. I don't care if y'all argue and fight all day long. Replenish the earth. Yeah. Oh, so I'd have made some women mad and here I can feel it some. And I couldn't care less. Because I'm the voice of truth. And you need to hear the truth. The truth is, when you look back over your life, everything in your life has been about you. Yes. Amen. It has all your life. Men, women, all we think about is our happiness. Yes. Do you know God couldn't care less about your happiness? He wants your wholeness. And when you get it whole, the wholeness will bring the happiness. What is wholeness? Perfect union. Father, head of the home. Mother, supporter of that father. Mother of those children. And what? here's what Satan will do. He'll come in and try to get the woman to want the man's position. And before you know it, you got a man sleeping with a man who looks like a woman. Wow. Every man can't preach like this, but I can. Because I know the truth. And if you'll listen to me instead of getting mad at me and get yourself in order, if you'll do that, you'll find happiness. Happiness is being in order. Finding your place. Now, don't go marry some dummy out of the will of God that treats you like trash. No woman in this ministry will be ever allowed to be treated like trash. Amen. Ever. Amen. There's no man in the world that's got a right to put his hands on a woman. Ever. Amen. Ever. Man, never stay in a situation where you've got an idiot that thinks he can touch you any way he wants to. You have a right to not be abused. Amen. But if you married a man like that, for God's sake, get out of it and start over and do it the right way. Amen. You know, tell me how I got on that. Come on. I'm old when I got the anointing, but after it lifts. 
Hallelujah. After this, I'm looking for the door. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Yahweh. Listen, Yahweh loves family. Yes, amen. And if you've got a broken family, so do I. But there's something called starting over and doing it the right way. Hallelujah. Never too late to do it the right way. Amen. Never too late. Amen. Amen. Read my book on divorce and remarriage. I've never seen a minister that understands divorce and remarriage like we do. Amen. It is truth. Amen. Yahweh wants you now to find a husband that will adore you and treat you like Christ treats the church. Amen. He wants you to find a man that will honor you, protect you, Make sure that you only work if you want to. You don't have to. Come on. He'll make sure there's a roof over your head. There's safety for you. He'll make sure no one hurts you. He will, he will do. That's his role. Let the man be the man. And I promise you, you'll love being the woman. That's just the way it's supposed to work. Amen. Praise the Lord. They don't get off trying to get off the subject. I just can't find an exit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Life. Tell you what, you men in here, you got good wives. Yes, we do. Yes. Yes. There are some good wives in this ministry. Amen. Amen. Good wives. Good, wives. good husbands. Amen. Man, if your husband ever mistreats you, you call me. Amen. 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 Why? We want you to have happy homes. Yes. We want the men to be men of God. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. You know, one thing I found out about my wife, the more I love her, the more she serves me. Amen. You never have to demand a wife to serve you. That's what I mean. Ever. If you're a lover. Mm -hmm. And treat her like she's the queen of the world. Mm -hmm. And have eyes for her only. Amen. Oh, and just love them. I see you, Daddy. Put your arm around her. Look at that. Aww. Look at that. <laughs> Amen. I see you back there, boy. You threw that arm around her. <laughs> we love family here. We want family. Yes. We want your family to prosper. Mine did because I married wrong. I married in rebellion against my grandmother's advice, my pastor at the time. I, I thought I was about happiness. The thing about happiness, it comes and goes. There's going to be days you ain't going to be happy. There's going to be days you're going to be like, Dude, lose some weight. <laughs> My wife didn't marry this. Uh -huh. She married Slim and Trim. <laughs> There's going to be days when she's going to be like, son, get out of the house. You get on my nerve. There's going to be days you're not going to be happy. Because yeah. happiness is a feeling. Yeah. It goes in and it comes out. You know? And there's always, listen guys, do you not know that every day women throw themselves in my path? Mm. There's not every day. I mean, I, I've got charisma. A lot of women misread that charisma, that personality that I have. You know, I have a personality. I love people. And as your pastor, I'm, I'm just a loving from the South. You know, we're just very loving people. And many times, I have to make sure that every woman in the world knows where my affection lies. Amen. Husbands, protect your families Amen. from the lure of the strange woman. Amen. They're out there. They're, and listen, the point I make, let me tell you when they show up, right when you're not happy. Amen. 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 Right when she just burnt the biscuits right. for the third time. Wow. <laughs> That's when they show up. <laughs> With a fresh batch of biscuits. 
Remember this, you're in a covenant with yes. your wife. Amen. You're in a covenant with your husband. That's right. You're in a covenant to honor, yes, sir. love, right. protect them, yes, sir. and protect yourself. Men, let me get to the timeline. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Spiritual life. Men, don't be alone with women. Amen. 90% of the failures in marriage is not because anybody wanted to fail. You get in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's right. You can't trust this flesh. No. I promise you you can. Just don't get in the wrong place. That's right. Don't put yourself in that position. Just don't. Just protect yourself. I don't know why I'm saying this today, but maybe Yahweh is trying to warn someone. Walk softly and protect yourself. Amen. Amen. You elders, don't let any of these women have to counsel with you by themselves. Amen. Ever. Amen. Protect yourself. Yes, Protect yourself. Protect your ministry. Amen. Because one day when we get into the kingdom of God, your entire thousand years, let me tell you who you're going to be with. Amen. The one that you Amen. You got a long drive to do. Yes, sir. Wichita. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So let's talk about our. My favorite. What the earth's going to be like. It's <laughs> That's true. And if you're in the first resurrection, I'm going to get this straight. Am I going to have more faith? Uh, you probably, hey, that is a good question. <laughs> if, I'll tell you what, how about this? If the one you love is in there with you, okay? Brother William Brandon had a vision. He went into the millennial way, and he came back and told his vision. He said that in that vision, now of course this is not scripture, it's just what he reported. He said everybody in the millennial reign, except for the children, was around what he would consider 35 years old. Right. Mm -hmm. It was their perfect state. When you were in that, that, yeah. that before the wrinkles came, before the, yes. right, you was at that point. So I'll take it. Third, no glasses, no, no, <laughs> for 35. Amen. Hey, 35 was good. That was my good years. I can do that. But to answer your question, that's probably the case. If the one you love is there, absolutely. All right, children, calm down. Let's go to Isaiah 35, verse 1. We're now moving into environmental changes. I'm going to get y'all out of this ditch. Let's go. Isaiah 35 is one. Can y'all tell I like the big addiction and run? Let's do it. Did we miss spiritual life? Yeah. No, I'm coming back to it. Yes, sir. Isaiah 35 is one. Yes, sir. Amen. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. All right, listen now. The wilderness will be what? So all of the wilderness of the world will be grass in the regenesis. Read. And the desert shall rejoice and the blossom as the road. There will be no more desert in Midland, Texas. Read. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto the excellency of Carmel and Sharon, and they shall see the glory of Yahweh and the excellency of our God. I'd like for you to imagine the world tomorrow with me if you can. Number one, no illiteracy. There'll be no poverty. No famine, no starvation, no crime. Every man will be honest and chaste and holy unto the Lord. Amen. 
everyone will walk in the Ten Commandments, the Torah, and the Holy Spirit will be poured out on all flesh. Satan will be bound from our minds. So how? Pastor Bob, that all sounds great. But can you give us the timeline of how? Why do you think the millennial reign is going to be a thousand years? This process is going to take a thousand years Amen. for this to happen. Amen. And you're going to be part of it. Let's start off with the first problem on planet Earth that Yahshua and us will have to solve. The first one. It is the population explosion. Around the world, the population is stripping our resources to sustain ourselves. But here's why. We don't have a population problem if we didn't have an earth problem. Only 10% of the earth is tillable. Right. Only 10% of our planet is arable land. And in 34 more years, the population is going to double. And you still only got 10% of our earth tillable. Yahshua will have to solve this problem after he ends the war with his enemies. Think about it. Imagine if our planet in Midland, imagine Midland, Texas was tillable land. Amen. Would you have? <laughs> This man blood sugar spiking over here, y'all. <laughs> you don't get to eat on Super Saturday. <laughs> so let's find out how Yahshua, the scriptures say he's going to handle this problem. How many agree with me? If you get rid of this problem, you've solved yep. the population problem, the food problem. you solved everything if the earth was tillable. Here's what he's going to do. He's going to make most of the earth tillable for food as we regenesis the earth. Amen. Number one, he's going to reduce the mountain ranges and raise up the valleys. High places become low. High places become low. Crooked places. He, this is a spiritual application and a natural. Right. When Yahshua returns, it's going to be the greatest regenesis project of a recreation. You've got to quit being so spiritual minded and realize that Christ is earthly minded. Amen. He's coming to fix yeah, earth. the earth. Restore the nations. Then he's going to change the weather patterns. He's going to make all the deserts. There will be no more deserts in the world. If you could take the Sahara Desert, El Betz, and make it tillable, there would never be another hungry mouth in the whole world. That's huge. That's huge. Ever. Wow. And he said in his word, the desert is going to blossom. Yes. Yes. Amen. Like a rose. Hallelujah. Folks, he's going to fix the roots and going down too. Yes. <laughs> I'm losing a one by one. But is there any scripture I'm glad you asked? Isaiah 41, 14 through 20. I want you to look at those mountains right there. You can't do nothing with that. What can you do with that? Look at it. All you do. It's wasted earth. If you can till that, 
Oh, we would be the most prosperous planet in all the galaxies. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to talk about those other planets in a minute, too. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 41, 14 through 20. Fear not that Fear not. That word Jacob and ye men of Israel. Fear not Israel. Fear not Israel. Read. I will help thee, said Yahweh. I'm going to help you. And the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I, Yahweh and Yahshua. I'm going to help you. Read. Amen. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp brushing instrument. I'm going. Having teeth. I'm going to. If you think the fallen angel showed you technology. Yahweh's in the construction business. That's right. Amen. Yes. We take out We take, yeah. we are just yeah. like him. Yeah. We're creators. Yeah. You know, when you're trying to do something, you find a new tool that'll do it. Yeah. He said, I'm going to show you, Israel. Yeah. Why? But now, why did he say, fear not a word? All that happened. Because they'll happen. We're the ones going to be doing the work. That's right. We're going to be fixing the earth. Yeah. Guys, it's not too spiritual. Restoration. No. It's a genesis. Yes. This is a purpose. That's the purpose of it all. And if I could ever get this vision in people's minds, so you'll start preparing. Now imagine people out there working, arguing with one another. That's why in this ministry we allow no arguing. When you get out on that land, I'll send you home with why. We're truly, I truly believe my calling, training for rain. I believe that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. We allow no arguments in this ministry. That's right. Why? You can't get out there working and arguing. No, very far. Or kill your people. It's got to be the kind of work you see at Remnant Ranch. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you come out to the ranch, it can be hot, it can be, it doesn't matter. There is a unity and a peace yes. Yes. as we work together, yes. building something for the Lord. Yes. Oh, now I see why my grandmother loved to build things for the Lord. Look, yes. that's what we're going to be doing. Hallelujah. Well, tell us about that instrument. I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. And what's it going to do? Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small. You're going to. And shall make the hills as chaff. You're going to turn the hills into chaff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to. Then I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to operate it. I'm going to operate it. I'm going to operate it. I knew that was coming. You're going to have to fight daddy over that. Oh, these would be several. <laughs> we got a lot of mountains, a lot of hills. <laughs> we're going to go to work, Pastor. Come on now. And we're going to solve the food problem. Now, can I teach y'all something here? Because I'm, I, I'm just going to move today. Okay. Now watch this. Why don't Yahshua just come and speak to the mountains? He always works through the end. He teaches men how to do his work. Yes, sir. I mean, I mean, come on, we make everything so super spiritual. I command this mountain, be this thouest, remove this into the yonder sea. <laughs> and God says, when you get through with all that, I got a machine to jump on it. That's right. That's just like, I, now nobody believes in the power of prayer more than me. But maybe if you pray for the headache and it didn't go away, find something to get rid of it. Yeah. I believe in prayer. But I believe sometimes when you pray, he tells you which medicine to take. That's right. I know that's true. The Apostle Paul wrote somebody that was sick and said, take a little wine for your stomach sake. Yeah. Why not just sit in some healing holy oil? <laughs> he left one of his comrades home sick. 
Yeah. Amen. I'll give you one better than that. Y'all not ready for this? You'll learn more in this ministry than you can listen. Listen. <laughs> when the Bible said anoint with oil, that don't mean pour oil. Now that's consecration, but for the sick. Yes. It's the it's the, the Greek word massage. Yeah. Massage. Massage them with oil. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're missing. <laughs> <laughs> Get those essential oils and massage them in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Hey, when my wife's back's hurting too bad and we prayed and then and we can't get it to stop, I send her to the massage to get what? It works. Yes. Quit being so spiritual minded that you don't understand. You know, I mean, I'm sorry. If I'm hurting and y'all pray and then ain't gone away, I'm going to the doctor. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm all for prayer. Listen, I'm being funny, yeah. but my point is, God uses yeah. tools, right. Amen. techniques. Amen. He tells you what to do sometimes. Yes. Do it. Amen. You know? Yeah. If you got an ingrown toenail, you don't got to pray for it. Cut it. <laughs> <laughs> we pray for the impossible. When our back's against the wall, when there's nothing that else will help. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's I'm just trying to teach you. Yes. Just being a pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I promise you, I'll rip the ditch out here and command this building to rise. Start building. Start building. Start building. Sometimes you got to just listen for his voice. Do what he says to do. Read. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away. The wind's going to tear them away. If you'll do your part, I'll do my part. I'll send the wind. Wow. You heard me? Amen. Because you cut it all down, and it's still piled up. Then you got to work to move the piles. He said, you, you, you get, and then I'll, I'll, whatever you need some supernatural help with, yes. I'll show up. Amen. My work will meet your work. That's the way Yahweh operates. Yes. Amen. 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 I'm that way with, with, with my sons. I would send them to do something. I knew they couldn't do it. Yes, sir. But I'd make them get started on it, and I'd show up. Right. Yes. Amen. That's a good part. Amen. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Amen. Read. Let's go through verse 20. Because yes. when I was reading all that, they didn't, think, they didn't believe me. Hey, you take that, take that old dry sand and put it in an a, a, a ocean somewhere. Come on. Fill it up. Let it be fertile. Now, now. Hey. Stay out. Stay out. Hey, <laughs> Sir, you gotta have it. Because remember, after the millennial, there'll be no more death, and we're still gonna be on the earth. If there ain't nobody dying, and all the dead people come out of the grave, you better have some food. All the minerals and nutrition we need are hidden within the mountains. Absolutely, and I'll tell you where else it is in a minute. Read. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in Yahweh, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none. Now hold on. Now what about the water problem in Midland? Right. Amen. Amen. And their tongue faileth for slurs. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers and high places, and the fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water, and the dry land springs of water. When Yahshua returns, after we bring down the mountains and we get arable land, supernaturally, 
Yahweh is going to do a work, and he's in these deserts going to cause, like he did in Noah's flood, the waters wow. to come up from beneath and begin to water the earth again. Amen. Somebody say regenesis. Regenesis. Amen. Let's bring up a way. It's prophesied that he's going to do exactly in the millennium what he did in Eden. How did he water Eden? A, a mist every day. A perfect mist would come up. He said, I'm going to do it in the, regenes in the regeneration. I'm going to do it again. You're going to do the first part. I'm going to teach you how to bring them mountains down. I'm going to blow them away. Send them into the rivers and the oceans. And then supernaturally, I'll show you how this works. Because you can't do that part. That's right. Yeah. I'll do that part. Wow. Amen. We'll work together. God and man. Amen. Always. Amen. We need Father. Read. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the, the cypress and the myrtle and the oil tree. Now we're going to have an explosion of what? Trees. Arbor Day every day. Amen. It's going to be trees, all a planet full of trees. Amen. Read. We'll be planting trees together. Come on. Amen. We're going to be planting trees all over the world. Hallelujah. Read. I will send the desert, the fir tree, and the pine, and the bottle tree together. All these different trees in the desert. Do you hear that? Why? If we had trees in the desert right now, we wouldn't have a problem. Read. God's got a plan to reach Genesis. Amen. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of Yahweh has done this and, Yah and the Holy One of Israel has created it. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe every word. Every word. Amen. Isaiah 35, 1 through 7. Let's read the millennial reign, what it's going to be like. Amen. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and the blossom as the rose. Read. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy, and singing and glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and share, and they shall see the glory of Yahweh and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even Yahweh with the recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Then. 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 Not before. Then. If it happens before, it'll be a miracle. Amen. Then it'll be common. Amen. Mm -hmm. Then every blind eye shall be open. Read. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. <laughs> then shall the lame man leap as in heart. Every crippled man will no longer be crippled in the real way. Amen. And the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of the dragons or jackals, where each lay, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Where there was desert, it'll look like the garden of Eden. Wow. Amen. Amen. Now let's talk about the water beneath the earth that he promised us. There was a story of a California earthquake where a river came up, and it's still flowing in California. Does it sound incredible that God could do that? Keep them warm. If the mountains were formed by Yahweh, they could be reformed. Amen. 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 Amos chapter 4, verse 3. Elder Rickman Rep. Psalms 92. Elder Conley Nahum 115. Go ahead. And ye shall go out at the break of the walls. Every, every cow at the which is before her, and ye shall cast them into the palace, saith Yahweh. Is that Amos 4.13? No. Oh, I thought it was 3. Oh. I was with that. I don't know how to preach that verse. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> 
We had, my, wife, my wife's a carnivore. She didn't like that one. Don't get rid of the cow. But lo, but lo, he that formeth the mountains and created the wind and declareth unto man what is his thought, that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name, Yahweh. He made the mountains. Do you not think he knows how to remake them? Yes. Amen. Psalms 92, Elder Rickman. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And he's coming to redo what's got to be redone. The book of Nahum 1 and 15, Elder Conley. See on the mountains the feet of him who brings good news and proclaims free peace. Oh, Judah, celebrate your festival, perform your vows. For Baal shall no more pass through you. He has been cut off completely. He that standeth on the mountains. Yahweh has a plan for these mountains. Revelation 16 and 18 and then Zechariah 14 and 4. And we're moving on. We're almost done. Amen. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And now you wonder where the water's going to spring up from. Yeah. 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 And, that, and did you ever wonder why there's going to be this huge earthquake all over the earth when Yahshua returns? Yeah. You think it's just for dramatics? Yeah. And that yeah. That's what's going to loosen the water from the deep parts of the earth and fill these uh, deserts with water. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so much more wonderful than heaven. Amen. To think what Yahweh is going to do to our beautiful planet. Amen. What we're going to do. Amen. That's why you cannot, if you plan to be a part of this, that's why you cannot eat unclean animals. Right. You're, you're destroying the earth. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah, you can't be a destroyer of what you're dreaming of rebuilding. Right. Amen. You start now. Amen. Yeah. I'm killing these people. They're dropping out of All right. Zechariah 14 and 4. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem. And what's going to happen to the big Mount of Olives? Read. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof. Did you ever wonder why the mountain's going to split wide open? Read. Toward the east and toward the west. And what's going to happen? And there shall be a great valley. A great valley. Read. And half of the mountains shall remove toward the north and half toward the south. The whole thing will split open. Read the next verse. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azale. Yeah, you shall flee like as you have fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. The earthquake, like in the days of Uzziah, the same thing happened. This earthquake has a purpose. Amen. It's to re repopulate and replenish and repair our earth. Amen. Now, let's go further. Amen. That's where that river, that river is going to come forth. Absolutely. Out of the ground. Out of that. And it's going to flow to the desert. Amen. Oh, and it's going to blossom like a rose. Hallelujah. Oh, honey, if this don't excite you, know this don't excite me. Where's all the money? In the ocean. It's in the ocean. Amen. Where's the only place we can't go and mine it and, and, and all that? It's in the ocean. So what God going to do with the ocean? Let's find out. Isaiah eleven fifteen. Where's all the gold? The oil? Where's the idea? If you can get in the ocean, do you not think we can get rich? Amen. Sure. We're going to get in there. That's right. Let's read Isaiah 11, 15. And Yahweh shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. Now what's he going to do to the tongue of the Egyptian sea? He's going to destroy that tongue area. Amen. Probably where all the wind from the mountains is going to go and fill that in. Read. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river. He's going to shake a wind hand over that river, that huge river. Read. And shall smite it in the seven streams and make it. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's he going to do with these oceans? Imagine, they're not going to all no longer be in one place. Wow. They're going to split into worldwide streams wow. that go around the world with water. And 
and that water is going to be healed. Wow. It'll no longer be salt water. Hallelujah. That's so, wow. It was in your Bible the whole time. Amen. Yeah. Restoration. Yeah. He has a plan. Do you, do you, children, do you get it? Do you see it? God's going to take that, that ocean and split it. Now, and there's that number seven. So evidently there's going to be seven worldwide nature rivers that flow with all this water. And then there'll be springs off of that. And there'll be no more desert. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Just perfection. Isaiah 33, 21 through 24. Let's continue. I'm getting a vision for the kingdom. Yeah. Wow. Real. But there, the glorious Lord, Yahweh, will be unto us as a place of broad rivers and streams. Yeah. Wherein shall go no valley. Wait. Wherein shall go no galley. Now, no galleys. These rivers will not be for ships. No, that's right. Yeah. This is strictly for water, Amen. for the people to drink. Keep it clean. Yeah. Keep it clean. Why? Because the rivers will come. The, the boats will contaminate this pristine water. Wow. Yeah. Woo! Spring up a way. There's still going to be boats if they ain't going to be allowed to go in there. They can't go in those seven rivers. Right. Yeah. Why, this is... God's reservoir Amen. of drinking water hallelujah. for the whole world. Oh, oh hallelujah. hallelujah. Neither shall gallant ships pass thereby, for Yahweh is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. Yahweh is our king, and he will save us. Thy tacklings are loose. They could not well, they could not well strengthen their mast. They could not spread their sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided, the lame take the prey, the plunder, or the, the, the plunder divided, the lame take the prey. And the, the lame man will get the prey of the water. Go ahead. And the inhabitant shall not say, I'm sick. The people that dwell there. The inhabitant shall never say, I'm sick. The whole, somebody say all, oh. is going to be forgiven of their sins. Joy is coming in the morning. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Now let's go see what our health is going to be like in the kingdom. Isaiah 35, 3 through 6. Elder Rick, grab Isaiah 58, 8. Amen. And we're coming to a close. Strengthen ye the weak hands. And confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong. Be strong. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Yes, he will. Even Yahweh with the recompense, he will come and save you. <laughs> then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. You know why? Guess what will be enforced? By Torah, Amen. in that day, clean eating. Yes. Everyone, listen, there will never be another catfish removed from these rivers. Amen. No more abuse for profit. There will be no more destroying the pristine nature of our planet. Because every man will abide by Torah. Amen. Isaiah 58, 8. Then shall your light break forth in Yes. Your health shall Your health shall change. Why? First of all, everything's going to be organic because the whole land is going to be retilled. Everything's going to come back into its natural order. And all of a sudden, your health is going to spring forth quickly. Not overnight. But quickly, yeah. you'll begin to change your patterns of health. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now let's see what else is going to be in that kingdom. Jeremiah 30, 17. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
and your right should be reporting to the Lord you normally get. So, the glory of Yahweh shall be your Lord. Oh, we go where we go. That's the angels of the Lord. Read Jeremiah 30, 17. Let's see what we're going to be doing in the millennium. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith Yahweh, because they called thee an outcast, saying, He, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Jeremiah 31, Elder Rickman, 12 through 14, and Elder uh, Conway, Deuteronomy 28, 1. I'm going to show you what's going to bring these blessings. Amen. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. What are they going to come on that day? What are we going to do? We're going to sing in the heights of Mount Zion. So we know there's going to be singing in the millennial reign. Read. Amen. And shall flow together. And they will not do it separately, but they will flow. Together. Oh, they will not dance one person here. They will flow together. That's why at First Harvest Ministries, we force, we command, we push for us to do everything together in unity. Because that's a millennium trait. That's training for reigning. Amen. Why do you think we all dance together? Look, in this ministry, if you see somebody take off dancing, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you see somebody over there crying, go cry with them. Yeah. Flow together. Yeah. Amen. No big eyes, no, no nobody stealing the show. Amen. We're going to be all doing it together, and you're not going to notice nothing because we're all one. Amen. That's a millennium. That's what we're going to do in the millennial. We'll be dancing together, eating together, working together. When you don't want to do things together, I don't think you have a millennium vision. I really don't. When you need your personal space, maybe for the bathroom and stuff, but we need to desire to be together. That's the purpose of these gatherings. To be, I mean, my God, I'm milking it. We've been together since at 10 o'clock this morning. Yeah. Amen. Why? My heart's dreading leaving. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. I know I'm almost, it's almost time for us to no longer be together. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you'll pardon me if I'm milking it. Milk. Yes. Yeah. All right. Amen. You'll pardon me if I, I don't want to not see your faces. We want to be together. Yes. We're millennium people. Oh, we do everything together. Amen. Amen. Read. We flow together to the goodness of Yahweh. Oh, yes. For wheat and for new wine and for oil. I'll teach you those things hopefully next year. Go ahead. And for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a water garden. Amen. And they shall not sorrow any more at all. We'll be no more sorrow. <laughs> and it shall be if you build just a little bit of water. Hold on, Hold on. Hold on. What's going on? I think your battery's dying. No. It's plugged in. Okay. All right, read out Deuteronomy 28. Oh, go ahead. Sure. I, I'm sorry. Y'all got to tell me. I can't see it. The young girls, the young girls will be dancing. Read. And the old men and the young men. What are we all going to be doing? Dancing. And who's going to be doing it? All young When Sister Ruth taught me dancing, it changed my life. When I watch churches on TV now and I look at the people not dancing, I'm like, my God. They're just clapping, you know, I'm like, come on, flow together. Flow together. Come on. As we dance, why? If 
every one of you says you're going to be dancing in the millennium, but you won't do it now. Oh. I just don't register in my mind. We'll be done again. Yeah. yeah. It'd be like saying tomorrow I'm going to be a world superstar, but today you're not practicing to be one. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm going to be a wrestling champion, and you can't wrestle nobody. Today, if you're really training, you'll never, ever not dance together, flow together, rejoice together. Don't just dance, rejoice. Hallelujah. Why we truly are training this ministry is strong. I want you to hear me. No ministry is fault as hard I've ever seen as this one. Do you know why we are still here? Amen. We flow together. Yeah. Amen. We flow together. You're not just like one man. We flow together. Amen. Unto the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Read Elder. I will turn their mourning into joy. I'm going to turn their crying into joy. Now, ain't it funny? Nobody, now listen now. Ain't it funny? Nobody has any problem going to church and crying. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ain't it funny? We all, even in the Baptist church, you cry a little bit on how great that was. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> you cry in any church and they'll all get yeah, cry with you. But when it comes to dancing, wow. yeah. we'd rather cry than dance. You know why? We're 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 naturally inclined to negativity. Because if you're dancing, you're saying Everything's all right. Yeah. 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 Even when the world's telling me everything's not all right. Come on, Pastor. Yes, it is. I'm flowing into the goodness of the Lord. Yes, yes. A believer that will not dance before the Lord is not a believer. Amen. Right. Amen. Read this Bible. Come into his presence with dance. That's what it says. Are you a Bible believer or a mama believer? Oh. Obey the word, and you'll be ready for the millennial reign. Right. Go ahead, Elder. I'm trying to close it down now. And Y'all wearing me out too. And, and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate the, satiate. Satiate the soul of the priests with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied. With <laughs> I'm trying to for right. I'm going to make the preacher stop. That's what it said. Come on, man. I'm just trying. Me too. Man, he's already ready. I like that little verse. Hallelujah. Everybody trying to put me on a diet, but the Bible said he fattened me up. Said y'all. Yeah. Now let's find out why they're going to be so blessed. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 5. And it shall be if you diligently obey the voice of Yahweh, obey my voice. Your Elohim, to guard, to do all his commands, which I command you today. That Yahweh your Elohim shall set you high above all nations of the earth. Yes. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you obey the voice of Yahweh, of Eden. And during the millennium, we will be, because every man will have the Holy Spirit. Amen. And what's the proof you have it? You obey the commandment. Amen. We pause right there, Elder, because uh, we, we get it. We understand. Let's go quickly. I've got to close. I'm, I'm running out of time. In the millennial reign, there will be one worldwide language. One worldwide language. Zephaniah 3 and 9. We're going to find out everyone will speak the same language Amen. in the millennial reign. Think about it. If it's going to be a one world government, it's got to have a one world language. Amen. That's what the Greeks did, but they took over as an empire, the Greek language. So let's read about it. Zephaniah 3 and 9. 
For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh, to serve him with one accord. Amen. It's fine. We're training for aid. Amen. I do believe that the Hebrew language, the pure language, because he said, here's why. He said, I'll restore unto them. So it must have already been a language in the past. And how many knows the Hebrew language is known as a lost or a dead language? No longer divided. Come on now. Amen. So, I know Elder Eric is training for rain. She's learning Hebrew already. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 60 and 5, and this is our last slide. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. All the oil, all the gold, and the sea, when the sea is dried up and put in the rivers, when that water is flowing out, there's going to be new wealth yes, discovered yes, for Israel. And what's going to happen now? All the nations of the world will do what? Read. The, the wealth of all the nations shall come unto thee. Everybody, all money goes to headquarters. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You heard me? Yes, sir. Amen. All money goes, in. goes to headquarters. Yes, sir. Yeah. Why? Amen. We're trying for rain. One day, all the money of the world will go to headquarters, yes, sir. Jerusalem, and every man will be taken care of from headquarters. Amen. Every need will be supplied from headquarters. Do y'all not see that I've had a vision for the kingdom yes. for a long time now? Yes, I built this ministry with a kingdom yes. vision Hallelujah. of doing it like the scripture tells us that it's going to be done in the millennial reign. Wow. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, that scripture just said all the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Amen. Sadly, sadly, we always thought that meant right now. The whole time we broke, still saying, but the wealth of the wicked is that. No, no. In that day. But because you don't know the kingdom, you make God look like a fool. I mean, I don't know about it. the rest of y'all. I ain't seen no wicked people rushing to give me their money later. No, no, no. So is God, see, that's the problem. Is God word alive? In other words, it's either going to happen or it don't happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. All the Gentile nations will bring their wealth to headquarters. Why? Because he owns the whole earth, everything in it belongs to him. Now, why is that going to happen? That's how, now, now hold on, I'm fixing to lay one on you. In the millennial reign, God's church will still need money to function. Amen. All the money goes to headquarters. Yes. Amen. Do you see? You mean Yahshua? What? Do y'all think Yahshua, do you think there's going to be no trading, no transactions in the millennial reign? Do you think Yahshua is just going to say, let there be money? No. No. The, he's going to finance his church the way he always has. Through the gifts of the people. Amen. And like right now, well, why do y'all need money? Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Why do we need money? Why was Jesus going to need it? Yes. Amen. He needed money so bad, he said, go down and find an efficient man. We got to have some money to run this thing with. Amen. Have y'all ever thought about when Yahshua returns? He's going to need money? Yes. I mean, honestly, yep. read it. It's in your Bible, not mine. Amen. Well, mine too. Amen. <laughs>
you've got to obey because we've got to be ruling with a rod of iron. That's right. That's right. Right. Hey, what I like is how the men are going to go back to farmers. Say it again. The men are going to go back to farmers. Absolutely. That's right. Every man will be a farmer. That's right. Now, there'll be some probably working at headquarters and, and technology and finance and all that. But the majority of creation will have their own plot. Yep. Their own. Have y'all ever heard any of this stuff? I mean, it's like people, yeah. they don't understand. I'm just so glad it's real life. It's yeah. real life. It's not some zombie. Spooky, zoomy. Yeah. yeah. Up there for animals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a Harry Potter movie. Yeah. With Dumbledore. Jumping around the planet. Modern governments need 40 to 90 percent of your income to function. Christ's government is going to take 10%. Amen. Fair tax. You ever heard of fair tax? Y'all yeah. get all of it first. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It breaks my heart when people don't understand that tithing, tithing is God's way of supporting His work. Yes. Amen. You don't have to. You don't have to agree with me, but you better agree with me. Amen. Because it's the word. God has to finance his work. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think God just wants us to give <laughs> of our own free will. And he can't get you to show up to church half the time. Much less you think you're going to depend on you to finance his work. Wow. Well. I mean, come on, let's be honest. Do you know why God set the tithe? Because he's a businessman. Yeah. He knows what his work has to have to go forth in the earth. He can't depend on some of you that, that, that don't even show up to work on time to support his work. So he lays down. You know what's funny to me is every church in the world is against the law of God except for the tithe. Yes. It's a smart business. The fair tax is fair. Amen. Amen. Yes. He said, look, I give you everything. You give me a fair tax. Wow. Amen. I'm going to give you, I gave you the breath to wake up and go to work. I gave you everything. Go. It's all yours. I'll let you eat. It's all mine, but I'll let you have it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you support my work? And we need you. We need a fair tax Amen. to support my message. Amen. That's it. Yes, sir. Amen. Sounds fair to me. There will be no democracy in tomorrow's government. It will be a theocracy, no elections. Every governor and king will be installed by Christ. We're not going to read those scriptures after a lifetime of faithful service. All crime and rebellion will be put down by force, by the saints. Christ will re-educate and convert the whole world. God's laws and customs will be reinstated. Zechariah 14. And I'm done. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. We, we scatter among the galaxies of the world. Yes, sir. And God will start God's next project. Yes, sir. I believe in God, my friend. He's always in the building business. Let's all stand. Will the best is yet to come. Y'all stand.